Hey guys, uh, cool, um, yeah, cool, who have we got, give me a name so I can fill out the register, and back to some, some riveting probability, how's the revision going, are you guys all ready, you got um, a whole week left to revise, and then one more weekend after that, so make sure you're doing some revision, okay, so we've got where do we start? Harry was here first. Where's Harry? There you are. Cool. Uh, George. George, you watching the uh, the movie tonight? Uh, Tristan. Tristan, where's that? Cool. Uh, Kieran. Lucy. Becky. Uh, Elliot. Uh, Billy. Chloe. Ollie. I wish this was alphabetical, it would make life so much easier. Uh, Guy. There you go. And Callum. Callum, cool. Uh, Danny. Uh, Jay. Uh, Lucas. Scott. Cool, so from what I can see, there's no Isaac, no Nula, Jake. Louis or Tom, if I've missed you guys, I'm sorry, but a uh, comment. Uh, Luke Nuda is so good. Cool. I have pre-ordered the album. Yeah, I got the Acid Acid Rain edition. I wanted the the Cobalt Metal one, but it sold out while it was in my basket. It was it was really sad, but I have pre-ordered. Yeah, can't wait. It's gonna be banging. All right, so Jake is here as well. Let's take him off. And. Yeah, nice. Oh, what did you not get the the good edition? That's a real shame. It looks so good, but acid one looks pretty good anyway. Anyway, back to some maths, I think. Uh, so missing Louis, Tom, and Isaac. Cool. If you guys, well, you won't be hearing this, but hopefully they'll say hello later. Cool. All right then. So um. Yeah, probability. So just a quick recap what we looked at last lecture. We said, what is probability? So we said, um, we're looking at experiments which are reproducible things where the probability doesn't change. And we're looking at the probability that an event happens is the number of outcomes where the event happens out of the sample space. And the sample space, remember, is the collection of all the outcomes. So we looked at rolling six, drawing a picture card. And uh, flipping head and rolling an even number, where we drew a sample space diagram. Uh, we then looked at tree diagrams. Remember, times along the rows add between the rows. Uh, looked at that question there. We looked at Venn diagrams. Did that weird um, nose, eyes, and noses and tongue uh, thing with that. Then we looked at shading this thing in, and that took ages, but it was pretty good. Uh, then we derived the equation. Remember, P A and B A U B is P A plus PB minus P AUB. There we go. There's our equation again. And we got to this question that we never did. So that's a very fast recap. Um, all right. So let's write the equation down first. So PAUB is PA plus PB minus P. Cool. Right, the way I would do probability questions normally is try and draw a Venn diagram always, unless it's clear it's a tree diagram question. So always try and draw a Venn diagram. 
and then use a mixture of the Venn diagram and that equation to try and solve it and find your probabilities. Right. Um, yeah, let's see if you guys can do this. It's, it's a four mark question. Um, try and draw a Venn diagram to represent this information and then try and use the Venn diagram and the equation maybe if you need it to work out both those probabilities. So it's worth four marks. I'm gonna give you guys five minutes because we haven't actually done much on this yet. And then we'll go through it as an example. So see you in five, give this a go.
Right, guys. Uh, let's go through this one. Tom, yeah, I've, I've switched into this, so that's all good. Um, all right. So you always need to do the box for your Venn diagram. That's the sample space, and this includes all probabilities. Um, okay, so I'm going to label these one for Dakor magazine and one for Haya magazine. I've done these backwards to you guys probably, but whatever. So um, H, the whole H circle is 0.6. And the whole um, Dacor circle is 0.4. And we know the probability the patient reads one or both is 0.7. So the whole figure of eight is 0.7. So let's fill in some bits. Out here is 0.3. Um, and now we can use the equation to find out the overlap. So A or B, 0.7 equals A. So whatever one, 0.4 plus 0.6 minus A and B. Cool. So um, if we subtract those, we get minus 0.3 equals minus the probability of A and B. So the middle bit is 0.3 as well, which means that this bit is 0.4. No, this bit's 0.3 and this bit's 0.4. No, that can't be right, can it? Uh, Done something stupid there, that should be 0.1. So both magazines 0.3, and then the probability they read Haya magazine is 0.6. Cool. Everyone right with that? Gonna assume so. Move on. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Could you guys try this one? So another four mark question, four more minutes. Please comment your answers when you get them um, and we'll see how you get on. Give it a go.
how do you guys get on? Anyone get any answers? No? Right, let's have a look at this one then. So we got, um... Shows the probability students study particular subjects at school. So we've got M for maths, P for physics, H for history. Given that probability of maths equals the probability of physics, find P and Q. Okay, so we're saying the whole of the math circle, so that's probability of M, is 0 0.32 plus P. The probability of physics is going to be P plus Q plus 0 0.07. And we know that those two things must be the same. So 0.32 plus P must equal P plus Q plus 0.07. So we could take away P from each side, take 0.7 off each side and get 0.25 equals Q. Then I can use that to work out what P must be by putting that back into the physics equation to get uh, P plus 0.25. No, that's not. So we found Q. Good. Uh, we can now use the fact that all of the probabilities have to add up to 1. Because we've got sample space, the whole total probability must be 1. So if I add them all up, 0.32 plus P plus Q. We just worked out 0.25 plus 0.07 plus 0.13 plus 0.1 must equal 1. If I add these all up, we should be able to find P. So I'm going to do 1 take away 0.32 take 0.25 take 0.07 take 0.13 take 0.1 and you should get P equals 0.13. So P is 1.13 and Q is 0.25. I mean, double check they work. 0 0.32 plus P, so that's going to be 0 0.45. Does that equal the other ones? Yes, it does. Cool. All right, time for another question. Okay, so not time for another question. Time for some new stuff. So that's the basics behind your Venn diagrams. It does get harder, and I'm going to explain why. So we have two separate things called mutually exclusive and independent events. So mutually exclusive events is when two events cannot both happen. So you flip a coin, it's heads or tails, you can't get both. You pick a card. It's either a red card or a black card. It can't be both. Uh, you open Schrodinger's cat's box. The cat's alive or dead. It can't be both. So, in other words, the probability of A and B is going to be zero because both events can't happen. So if you had to draw a Venn diagram for some mutually exclusive events, you would get two separate circles where they cannot both happen. Independent events, slightly different, is when one event doesn't affect the other. We're going to come on to this a bit more, maybe the end of today's lecture, or maybe next week. Um, yeah, independent, one event doesn't affect the other. Now, there's some ways we can test to see if things are independent or to see if they're mutually exclusive. I'm going to give you guys a test, and then, as I said, on Monday or maybe towards the end of today, we'll prove where these tests have come from. So, mutually exclusive. So, test number one is if there is no overlap if A and B is zero. Test number two is if A or B is A plus B. So if that's true, they must be mutually exclusive. And that bit there just comes from the fact A U B is A plus B minus A and B. 
because if a and b is zero, it gets rid of that bit, and then we end up with just a and b plus is a well, a or b is a plus b. Independent, we are going to talk more about, but for now, the test for independence is if a and b is a times b. So if that's true, we know that um, our events are independent. So for now, they're just two things you've got to learn. We're going to explain a bit more details as to why later on. Okay, so could you guys try this one? Given that they are independent, find the two values, find the two possible values for P and Q. So given that they are independent is a clue that P A and B is P A times P B. So I'll give you guys four minutes to try and do this one. Starting from now.
So yeah, I'm just going to use the equation. So because I'm going to depend it, a tan b should be a little bit, a little bit b, which should equal a to the tan b plus b times a to the Crap. Sorry, guys. Uh, okay, so I'm basically using the equation in red. We're saying probability A and B, which is the middle bit, this bit, is P. So I've put that over here. Uh, probability of A, this one, is the whole of this circle. So I've added them up here. And then the probability of B is going to be the whole of this circle, so I've added those two bits up there. I've then expanded this double set of brackets to get this long quadratic. And I'm going to solve this to try and find what P is. So, we're going to get P squared. Uh, what's that going to be? Plus 0.42 plus 11 is going to be 0.53 take away 1, so 0.53 is get 1, minus 0.47p plus 0.0462 equals 0. So this, I'm guessing, is going to have a semi-decent solution. So if you go to equation, a new equation, polynomial solver, type it into calculator, 1p squared minus 0.47p's, and then point zero four six two next one so uh oh we get some oh we get two answers and they're both horrible great okay so p is going to equal uh 0.33 or 0.14 yeah, it's not that horrible i guess so that's that done and now we're going to use those to try and find the two different values of q so then get rid of all this if you guys do need to copy this just pause it or rewind it um, and we're going to say 0 0.42 plus p, well p could be one of two things, so we'll do two separate equations, 0.33 plus 0 0.11 plus q equals 1. So solve both of these. And let's do that here then, so 0 0.42 plus 0.14 plus 0.11 one take ants so we get q it's not point three three oh this is interesting okay point four two plus point three three plus point one one we get not point one four so they kind of fit in pairs like that or like Gonna assume you guys are okay with that, and we're gonna move on. Cool. So we've got a Venn diagram question. Um, can you guys give this one a go? And this time, can we have some answers written in the comment section, please, guys? So uh, I reckon five minutes for this one, and see how we do.
cool. All right, let's go for these. Um, yeah, Harry, that looked pretty good. Let's have a look, see if you're right. Um, so, state which two types of toy are mutually exclusive. So, which two don't have an overlap? Well, T and B. So, you are correct there. So, T and B are mutually exclusive. We can say B and T equals zero. No overlap. Good. Okay, part B. Determine whether the events plays with bricks, which is this, and plays with action figures are independent. Okay, let's find out. So the test for independence is whether the middle bit, so independent if B times F, or let's do this properly, probability of B times the probability of F equals the probability B and F. Billy looks good as well, cool. Uh, B and F, so we're testing this out. So what's the probability of B? Well, that's going to be 4 out of... How many in our total? 3, 4, 8, 10, 16, 21. 4 out of 21 times F, which is 11 out of 21. Does that equal 1 out of 21? That's what we're trying to ask ourselves. So on the calculators, we could times them 4 divided by 21 times 11 out of 21. Does that equal 1 out of 21? Nope. Uh -oh. So not independent. Therefore not independent. Good, well done you guys. Um, next question. So it's a four marker. I'll give you guys five minutes and uh, see how you get on. So five minutes to do this one, and I think we're going to move on to the next bit of probability after that.
Okay, so maybe a little bit trickier than the last one. Um, write down the value of x. So we know all the probabilities have to add to 1. So 0 0.4 plus x plus 0.3 plus 0.05 equals 1. So therefore x is 0.25. Okay, then determine part B, determine if uh, like pasta and like pizza are independent. So we're going to do is P A times P B 0.25. So that's 0 0.65 times 0.55, which I don't think is going to be it, which gives you 0.35. Therefore, not independent. Cool. All right, uh, next one. Or is that it? Ooh, that's it. Cool. Okay, so that's kind of the basics in probability. It gets harder. We get this thing called conditional probability. Okay, so um, could you guys, let's do a quick survey. Um, how many of you have a pet cat? And how many of you have a dog? And how many of you have a dog and a cat? So could you write in the comments dog, cat, or cat dog if you've got both? Or none. None is an option as well. Okay, I'll give you a minute to respond to my little survey. Uh, ready, steady, go. That's your time. Um, okay, let's tally this up then, I guess. So we've got dog, one, cat, one, cat, one, dog, dog, one, dog, one, cat, one, dog, one, dog and cat, dog and cat. Cool, right, that's it. Um, I've counted everybody. Okay, so how many of you are there still here? We've got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 of you. Cool, 15 in total. Okay, so if I had to pick one of... I'm, if I'm picking one of... I've got one of you in my head at random. So I've chosen one of you guys. Um... Let me write down my choice somewhere. Let's go for... Okay. If you guys had to guess who I'm thinking of, what would your probability be of guessing the right person at the moment? If you just had a guess. So probability of guess. What's your probability of guessing the right student? Could you put that in the comments? One in 15, yeah, thanks Lucas. So yeah, at the moment you've got a chance of one in 15 
guessing the right student. Okay, I'm going to tell you now though, it's somebody who has a cat. So you're now trying to guess, given they have a cat. What's your probability of being correct now? So have a think and write down your new probability. I've given you the fact they have a cat. What's your new chance of correctly guessing this student? How many students have a cat in total? Seven. Good. So what it does is, it means I can say, well, it's not any of those students. It's not any of those students. It's got to be one of these seven students. So we've got one out of seven. So what's happened? Using it's still the same one student. What's happened? Using the words, the probability words we looked at last lecture, what has happened to the situation once you've been given a probability? So I've given you a condition. What's happened to the situation? The outcomes, the you know, all those words we looked at the other day. Any ideas? Mm. Okay, I'll talk you through it. So, Increased the probability it has, but how has it increased the probability? What's happened in order for the probability to increase? So what's happened is um, when you are given a condition, it reduces the sample space okay and that is the key part reduces the sample space so the sample space yeah Callum nice and and Lucas as well good um, the sample space was 15 I told you that ah, they got a cap and you're like ah the sample space is now seven so it reduces it that's the key bit for this topic if you know something it reduces your sample space so, on a Venn diagram, if we did the same thing, um, can I remember the data? What did we have? We had cat, dog. I know there were five of you that didn't have Eva. Three of you with cats, four of you with dogs, and four of you with both. I think that's it. Tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what our Venn diagram would look like. So, what's the probability that someone has a cat given they have a dog? So, this is how we write condition probability with that line. So, this is probability of a cat given they have a dog. Have a think. See if you guys can work this one out. I'll give you three minutes to have a have a go at that. Oh crap, three had dogs today. Have I got the. Is it four cats, three dogs? No, I'm sure that wasn't right. <laughs> I've got rid of it now. Um, can I scroll up? I'm sure it was the other way around. I'm sure there were three cats and four dogs. Give it a sec, guys. I'll, I'll restart the timer in a second. Okay, so we have. Cat. Cat, cat, and that's three. Was it four for both? Was it? Yeah, three cats. One, two, three cats. Dogs. We had one, two, 
three. Oh, is that what it was? Three, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Fine. Right. You got two minutes left. See if you can uh, see if you can work that out. Thank you for spotting it. So no one's no one's got as far as I can see. So um, the sample space is reduced. So you're told they have a dog. So the sample space is now seven. How many of those seven people have a cat? Four. So the probability becomes four out of seven. Okay, let's try another one. What's the probability they don't have a dog? Given they have a cat. So if you guys could try that one, I'll label this one number one. And then number two, probability they have a uh, cat and dog, given they have a, given they don't have a dog. Oh, that's going to be difficult. All right, can you guys try those two? Uh, we'll say four minutes for those two, so you can get those two probabilities.
Okie dokie. Um, let's go through this one. So we've got some answers this time, which is good. Um, yeah, that second one was maybe a bit of a trick question. Um, okay, so first one. Probability of not a dog, given they have a cat. Well, given they have a cat, it's going to make our sample space reduce to this circle. So it's going to be out of 7. And we're going to get uh, no dog, 3 out of 7. Second one, given they don't have a dog, so it's going to be out of um, 8. Probably they have a cat and a dog, uh, 0. So that's going to equal 0. There we go. So there's actually a formula for this. This is the conditional probability formula. It says probability of A given B is the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. But you can see why. If I draw a little Venn diagram. There's A and B. Given that B has already happened, okay, so that reduces our sample space to just what's going on in here. So our denominator becomes B, and the probability of A happening, well, all that's left of A is the, the overlap, A and B. So we get A and B out of B. Callum, I'm uh, just saying, I don't get why it's out of seven. If we know they have a dog, surely there are only three people who have cats without dogs. Um, which one are we doing? Out of seven. No, because you first of all had to do... Wait, which one are you talking about? The first one. We know they have a cat. If they have a cat, it has to be one of these seven people. So it has to be one of these seven. Given they have a cat, what's the probability somebody has a dog? So, given they have a cat, what's the probability they don't have a dog? Well, the people that have cats, so the seven of you, three of those people don't have a dog. Yeah, so it's going to be three, but out of seven. If I said, choose somebody at random, they have a cat, what's the probability that they don't have a dog? Because you would include all the people that have cats and dogs. So you'd include George, who has three cats, three dogs. Um, no, he doesn't. That's, that was an answer to the question. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd include anybody that has both, and then you'd count them that way. Right, back on systems. Yeah, so that's where the formula comes from. You reduce the sample space, so hence your denominator is your new sample space. And all that's left of A would be the union. So you get that equation. So our two equations in probability are probability of A or B is PA plus PB minus PA and B and probability of A given B is PA and B over PB. So those are your two equations for this. Okay, now here's where mutually exclusive and independent come back in. So if something is mutually exclusive, if mutually exclusive, we know there's no overlap. Both things can't happen. So we get probability of A and B equals zero. And you can imagine that the term above, the A and B in the equations above, will then turn turns equation into A or B is A plus B. Okay, so this is the 
the whole condition for mutually exclusive. It basically tweaks the yellow equation. And in a similar way, if something is independent, and you'll see this now, um, let's say I flip a coin, I don't have a coin, um, I flick a plectrum, heads or tails, and let's say you flip a coin. If I get heads on my coin, does that affect your coin's outcome? No, they're independent. So if A given B, if they're both independent, A doesn't care if B's happened if they're independent. A given B, given B's happened, well, A doesn't care. A will still be the same. So if things are independent, the probability of A given B will just be the probability of A. What's the probability of winning the lottery given I rolled a six on a dice? It doesn't change. It's still the same probability of winning the lottery. Uh, what's the probability of um, I don't know, what else do you do you use probabilities for? What's the probability of I don't know, I can't think of anything now. Rolling a six on a dice given some guy in Las Vegas just won a jackpot. Doesn't affect it, it's still a six. So those events, if events are independent, A given B just equals A. And that has an effect on this equation. So if they're independent, we'll end up the um, this term. I'm just going to circle it. I'll delete it in a minute. This term, a given b, will turn into just a if they're independent. And then we could times up the numerator and get a and b is a times b. So that's where that uh, equation I showed you earlier came from. So that leads to um, turns equation into a and b is a times b. So the yellow and green ones are the equations you need to know. But the red and the blue bits are specific cases. There's one case of independence and one case of mutually exclusive, and they alter the equations. Quick note here, you can't be independent and mutually exclusive. Doesn't make sense. Well, could you? Uh, yeah, I guess you could. You could be both. It'd be very unlikely, but yeah, you could be both. Uh, wait, no, could you? Nah, my brain's not working now. Could two things be mutually exclusive? So they both can't happen. And independent, so if one happens, the other. No, that makes no sense. You can't be both mutually exclusive and independent. They're completely separate um, things. All right. Anyone got any questions about that? Because we're going to try just a couple more on this conditional probability stuff, and we'll probably need a lecture to practice this next week. But then we'll do revision. But um, anyone got any questions on that? If you do, just ask. I'm just going to spend a sec to uh, get the next question up. Um, two seconds just while I find this.
Cool. All right. Could you guys try this question? And make me make it a bit bigger. Yeah, cool. So two, four, six, seven, eight. Yes, we just about got time to give you guys eight minutes on this and then go for it. So if you can give this one a go, um, I'll put the equations up for you so you can use those if you need them. But remember, it's about reducing the sample space and going from there. So two equations. There you go. Cool. So that should be enough to get these ones done. Oh, why is that thing showing back up again?
Cool. Right, uh, let's do this, and then that's going to be it. So, um, let me just get rid of all this stuff. So this is a typical um, A-level style probability question. Okay. So we've got two events. Um, we can draw a Venn diagram for these events because they have an overlap. So if I draw one down here, A, B, the overlap we're told is 0.12. We know A is 0.4, so the rest of A must be 0 0.28. We want to find PB. Okay, so we know A and B are independent, so that tells me that probability of A times probability of B equals probability of A and B. Oops, bit of a mess of stuff. Mute that. So A is 0.4, so 0 0.4 times PB equals 0 0.12. So we can divide that to find PB. So 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.4 gives me PB is 0 0.3. Okay, let's put it in our Venn diagram anyway. So we're going to get 0 0.18 there. And now we can work out the outside because we know all of the Venn diagram has to add up to 1. So um, not A and not B is basically asking us for the outside, which is going to be 0 point, uh, would that be 0 0.4, 0 0.58. So 1 minus 0 0.58, which is 0 0.42, the outside. Okay. So then told there's a third event, all right? And we're told A and C are mutually exclusive. So that is a hint to tell me that there is another thing here. And it means that B is going to be a bit split up. So this 0.18 here that we've got for B is actually being shared between C as well. So I'm going to write that down here, 0.18. And remember that that's going to, some of that's going to disappear in a minute when I put C in. Okay, and we know B and C is 0.1. So that tells me what's left of B is 0.08, which can go in the middle there. And um, we you know probability of C is 0 0.4, so this bit here is going to be 0 0.3. Okay, let's work out what's left outside, just so we've got everything that we need. So we're going to add all those up and take them all away from 1. Which leaves me with 0 0.12 on the outside. Alright, so we want B given C. So... We can use the equation or we can use the diagram. Uh, C, B given C tells me that the sample space will be reduced to C. So my denominator is going to be 0 0.4. And my numerator will be B and C. So B and C we know is 0 0.1. So it's 0 0.1 out of 0 0.4, which is a quarter, 0 0.25 for B and C. And the last bit, probability of A and not B or C. That's nice and confusing, isn't it? So it's got to be A and not B or C. So let's work out not B or C and then see if that um, see if that mixes with uh, A at all. So I'm going to use my green pen. I'm going to put a blob in each region that is not B or C. So not B, well, this outside is not B, and this bit is not B, so that's all the not B bits. Now I'm going to put blob in any bits that are C, so this bit is C, and this bit is C. Okay, what's the probability that it's A, and it's that re one of those regions? Well, if we look, the only region there that does being A, whilst being one of those other regions, is 0.28. So the answer to this one, 0 0.28. Right, has anyone got any questions? Uh, I'm not going to start the old one now because we've only got six minutes. Um, could you guys start the next assignment, which I think is the probability assignment? Um, next week, we'll spend probably half the lecture, maybe a whole lecture, practicing probability because we did go back through that quite quickly. And then for the rest of the next week, we're going to be revising pure because you've got your exams the following week. Cool. Make sure you revise for those guys. You want to do well so that you don't have to do any retakes because that would be a pain in the neck to have to do 
at this stage. So really try and um, get the revision done for those class tests. Um, there's past papers up on Moodle, so you can use all of those. Um, or ask me if you need any extra help. But uh, yeah, make sure you're all uploading the assignments then to um, Moodle, and I'll check those through. And some of you still haven't uploaded the stats analysis task, which was set for Overista. So can you guys make sure that's either emailed to me or uploaded on the Moodle site? Cheers, guys. Have a nice weekend, and I'll see you. Well, you'll see me on uh, Monday. Cheers. Take it easy.